Feels good to be back on scorecard. Uh, Benjamin Nketia here. The AFCON itself is rolling along very nicely. Angola have booked their place uh, in the quarterfinals. Nigeria have booked their place as well in what was um, some sort of an AFCON classic against Cameroon. It was a really good game. Earlier today, there was a Kutura Guinea uh, versus Guinea, and it was just a one-goal uh, advantage that took uh, Guinea through to the next round. Egypt are uh, finally up against the DRC. Egypt also squeezing through the group stage, uh, unlike the Ghana uh, Black Stars. But we'll see if we can get into a little bit of that game. We'll get into some FA Cup action as well. And then we'll also get into some action from other leagues happening. Barcelona. Interesting news coming out of Barca is that Xavi says he will step down after this season. Very interesting results against Villarreal uh, yesterday. Real Madrid were also up against Las Palmas. Interesting games all across Europe generally. I uh, will dissect all of those along with the AFCON as well. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I'll introduce my gentleman who will get talking. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Coach Christopher Nimli is here. Charlie. Ah, it's been a while. Charlie. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> Good to see you. Looking Long nice back. in your red, you know. Of course, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. But I've been here uh, in recent times. So, ah, yeah. Nice to see you. It's good, yeah. Nice to see you. Nice yeah. to see you. Ah, the Afcon is rolling along really nicely. Let me let me just take your overall impressions about the games that have been played this weekend before we even get into, you know, the specifics. What has caught your eye so far, Coach, this weekend? I think so far, I think the Angolans. The quality of the football they are playing yeah. absolutely sublime. And um, it is like there isn't any boring game, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is more or less what the tournament has been about since yep. its commencement. Yep. From the very first game, it's been fireworks, it's been entertaining, yep. it's been exciting. The quality of the football, I must really re uh, commend La Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Their pitches, the, yeah. I think that has contributed to the quality that we've seen. And yep. the players themselves have shown great commitment to the course of their national team, apart from one other team that maybe we wouldn't want to mention. It. So unfortunately, <laughs> like, we happen to be glued to that team as well. But having said that, look, in the knockout stage, I think that game against yeah. Angola versus uh, Namibia, uh, Namibia was, was super. And of course, the Cameroon-Nigeria game, for me, I wasn't surprised because Cameroon have shown throughout the tournament that they lacked genuine creativity. When they are mm. under pressure, they only resort to the root one sort of... Yeah, it works at times. Yeah. Against an equally physical big team, yeah. they will battle that all day. And the Nigerians yesterday, I think, yesterday game against Cameroon was the best I've seen of them in the entire tournament. It, it was absolutely brilliant. Mm. Unfortunately, Ekitura Guinea, who's done so well... I think they today, might have been the best team in the tournament. Yeah, just of like, quality of football. Quality play. of football. They knew... They, if there's anything that has played to its strength yeah. in this tournament is a Kitora Guinea. They know that they had a maxman who is very experienced but mm -hmm. would not run all over the place, very demarcated area. And then he makes his presence uh, felt and the entire playing body understood what they had to do for him. Yeah. It's rather unfortunate that on the day where they needed him the most, yeah. he stepped out and missed the penalty when they were a man down. I felt that if he had scored that yep. penalty, I think they would have gone the past complexion of the game changes. The moment he missed that, Guinea capitalized on the man advantage and dealt with them. So, look, so far, so very good. We're watching, the one, I was watching the Egypt-Congo game just yeah, after. Just come, I got on. furious on the penalty given to Egypt. I don't know what the, what the defender should have done. Could yeah. he have jumped with his hands on his side? Clearly, he needs to give himself something to leap from on. But if by doing so, he's going to resort in a penalty, then look, Football has changed. I don't know why that any time the referee are called to go and look at the VAR, yeah, they tend to give a decision in, in, yeah. in to more or less confirm what those people in there are telling him. And to me, that is one thing that we need to look at again. Hmm. VAR having been good uh, for most parts in this tournament. Looks like they are uh, stuttering a little in this particular game. That is just quick thoughts on uh, what, you, what has caught your attention so far before we get into today's games. For me, some of the guys, um, you know, for, for some of the unsung heroes, some of the names I've seen, um, we've gone into the tournament knowing people like players like Osimen, um, yeah. Bakambu, and some of the players that we knew that were going to come into the tournament and do all. But I've been impressed by some of the and, and, and notes, I would say. Um, Johnson Dallard and Gola has been, has, has, yeah. has been yeah, very impressive. Been yeah. um, the way he, he's... He's, he's on four goals in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's not just about the goal scoring, it's about how... 
he manages to control the games yeah. when he has to win. Yeah. And beyond that, he, he's been very impressive. I've been, I've been impressed with Mishak Elia of, of Congo, DR Congo, who has, who yeah. has come in and has done so well. Even our own uh, girl Kekuta, yeah. who, who, who started creating a lot of chaos at Chelsea yeah. <laughs> and diminished one, for a one while. One point and, was, I think, golden boy in Europe. <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. And, and he comes to this tournament and has been dazzling. He has, he has really contributed to a yeah. lot of things DR Congo has done. Unfortunately, he's not into the. He couldn't play today because he's injured. But generally, I've been I've been impressed with the football that I've seen. Um, mm. Coach mentioned the Kutura game. I think for today, I think they were a bit unlucky. I think they played well. They missed a penalty, yeah. and, and all of those contributed to how how they fed. So um, I think generally, I think it's been a good tournament. It's been great. I think beyond some of the decisions, I think generally the, the officiating team has been okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the most of the decisions have been got have been right. If you if you if you ask me, because I've watched the games from the beginning, I think that. Besides a few hitches here and there, I think generally for yeah. has been spot on. So yeah, it's been a good tournament and mm. I, I think it'll get better every time. Well, talking about Equatorial Guinea, uh, there was an Equator Guinean journalist who collapsed when that penalty was missed. Um, we hope she's okay. Uh, hopefully she's recovered uh, and is all well and good as things stand now. But let's get into the games itself. Let's start off with the round of 16. Let's start off with that game between Angola and uh, Namibia, great goal scored by the Angolans back in the quarterfinals for the first time in 14 years. And they did it in style. Let's get to the highlights of that game. So 3-0 is how it ended. Angola doing it in grand style. Their president uh, was watching the game back home. Uh, they've been promised all kinds of goodies for every stage uh, they managed to advance to. So some countries doing really well, other countries not doing as well, coach, yeah. um, you have your uh, tactical board here. Yes. What goals are we looking at? I enjoyed all the goals, really. Yeah, all the goals were absolutely brilliant. But I think I want to look at the first and the third goal. Mm. I think those two goals actually highlight what, as a footballing team, the yeah. Golans have been all about. What they've actually done so well yeah. at an all tournament. Yeah. When you are looking for the team that will get its most influential players, yeah. get on the ball and detect the tempo of the game, it's yeah. been Angola. Mm. Everybody watching this game, as a coach, I've always encouraged the off-the-ball movement of players. Yeah. So if you look at this guy, the he Alberto. gets the ball. That mm. was the goal. Look, I think that, sorry, I think mm. that the pass. Gilberto on the wings there. Yes, Gilberto on the Look at the captain. Pause it here. Look at him. He saw the space. Yeah. He saw the space in between these two center backs. Yep. And all he needed to do was to attack the space. But that's a brilliant pass because exactly. the pass basically takes three players out. Way out of it. Yeah. And, and I believe that Gilberto credit must be given to him because mm -hmm. he could tell that his captain was going in the space. And if you really look at this in this very slow fashion, yeah. he gave the entire back line an unlooking. Yeah. As if he was as going to pass yep. the ball this way. Yep. So they were caught unaware. And for me, the captain is the one who scored it. Now everybody watch. The moment the ball get to him, for some players, yeah. they would have shot for goal. Mm. This is the player who eventually puts the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. This player here yeah. for Angola. He eventually put the, back, the ball in the back of the net. Look at his movement. So the captain knows. He didn't even look. Yeah, Freddie passes the ball. Back into the back Girls of the net. Dalla is making the run. This is the runs we've been talking about. Diagonally, mm. he knew he needed to get there as quickly as possible. Okay. And the captain, see, it is routine. These yeah. are routines. And these are their top, their four, yeah. their four up the field men. Exactly. Left wing, right, right wing, number 10, and, and then, then number forward. Nine. Everybody is involved yeah. in, the, in the builder. And for me, like I said, they are so far the best footballing team in the That's tournament. True. Without a doubt, true. You, you hardly see them go route one. If they have to, they are off then the they've seen the space. When the counter is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We watched them against the Black Stars in yep. Kumasi, yep. and it took the last minute for them to, for we to beat them. And yeah. we're very lucky because they have created all the beautiful chances in that mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Now, I want, it, I want to again highlight their third goal. That mm. goal, again, stressed the importance of the off-the-ball movement that we highlighted in the first game. Now, watch that. If it starts from here, I'm going to allow you to roll a bit more. Mm -hmm. He picks the ball, and the guy who's on the move. Yeah. Unlike that the Black Stars of God. 40-yard pass exactly, from, 40 behind. from the behind. To him, Second guy he just passes his own, yeah. Because his, his, his teammate allows him, his teammates know. Look at the ball here. Everybody watch here. If you watch, you see that clearly. Mm -hmm. Let's go touch this, touch this, touch this. 
Oh boy. I think you could just demonstrate I, I, that. I, yeah. I wanted to point that, show the colors. But look, mm -hmm. if you roll this a little bit and it's going and yeah. you pause it here, yeah. look at the movement. All he needed to do was to find himself. There. Yeah. And, and even if he, he had the play. And even he has options. He just, has options. Just in case. And another mm -hmm. disadvantage mm -hmm. that Namibia had was the gap between the two center back. Yeah. I think it was too huge a gap. This center back here should have been somewhere around there, very close to the goal getter. Mm. Look at it. It's a 3v3. Yeah, he has acres this, of space in between himself and this that. This Namibia player here, mm -hmm. he's actually done his job. Yeah. Taking he's care. taking care of the guy. So he is no he's under no problem, no delusion or anything at all. The problem had to do with the gap created by yeah. the center back. I think he was sleeping on the job or he slept on the job. By the time He's, he realized that the gap was too huge. The Angolan player was already on the move. And look at Aiton by far. This is the most composed goal I have seen in the tournament. Yeah. Very composed. Look at first touch, saw mm. the goalkeeper, and absolutely sublime. You need, to, you, need to, sublime. you need to be of a certain level of technique to even try. You need yeah. to believe in your ability. All he did was control the ball. Yeah. Okay, this is where the goalkeeper yeah. is. Let me just ding the ball. He just dinged the ball yeah. over him. And it was in the back of the net. And for me, if you're a young player and you're watching, two very important mm. things that you need to build on. Mm -hmm. Always move to make the passing channel very, very easy for your teammates. So for the game against Angola yeah. and um, 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 Namibia. Namibia, I think these are the two goals Fantastic. that we really wanted Fantastic. to highlight. Fantastic. And the Angola national team, yeah. um, like Coach Riley mentioned, um, the best ball play inside, they have a big game against the Super Eagles. We'll be getting to that game in a bit. How do they navigate that game? Because, uh, I mean, their stars are not as big as the Super Eagle stars, but they have shown that collectively they can play. But defending, I've seen some suspect defending from them. Unfortunately, Namibia could not take advantage. Is that a game they can navigate? I think it's, it's a game they can navigate, but it's going to be a difficult game for them. Uh, mm. they ha they've got what it takes to go beyond that. You I, th I think you, mentioned, you did mention the fact that they, uh, they concede goals sometimes, especially... Yep. Uh, but I think it's the consequence of how they play. I, I think because they are very attacking yep. and because of the way they are always they have their foot forward, it makes them vulnerable on the counter attack. But yes, Nigeria is, is, a, is a very experienced team. It's not like they've been, they've been um, extremely good themselves, but mm -hmm. just, I think they have this level of experience been playing AFCON for so long yep. and they've managed to take advantage of their strengths and that's what Nigeria has done. They themselves are not good defensively, but they've, what they've mm. done is actually to make sure that they've got a very pacey attack where yep. you have this Osimen, there's... Um, yeah, it will be. There's, yeah. there's and then Simon. There's Luke Man. There's, there's, um, there's, there's Ademola Luke Man. He's extremely, he's, he's extremely mobile forward. Yep. So what they try to do is to make use of them. I, I like the way they played. Mm -hmm. Nothing um, exciting. Just trying to make use of the counter attack yep. and then move. For, for Angola, I think that what I liked about them against Nabia was that they got down to ten men in the early stages. The mm -hmm. goalkeeper were cutting. Mm -hmm. But the ability to still have the composure at this level, yeah. not to get distracted. You wouldn't have, you would have noticed exactly. if, you, if you walked into the game you, by chance. You, you just have regrouped quickly and quickly. went about their and, business. And, yeah. and, and, it, and, and, they, and they just relaxed and, and tried to play their own game. And Namibia, and unexpectedly, they rather fell victim to the record again. And they, they got reduced to 10 men. Yep. And then they managed to play their game. So I think that I, I like that bit of them, the way they were able to maintain their composure and adversity. And, and came back and won the game. So if you ask me if they have a chance, they do have a chance. But Nigeria, the level of experience they do have, you mm. know, you could consider them as favorites. But trust me, I will not put anything past this Angolian team. They, they are very good. Well, I like to see a good ball play inside, make it deep into a tournament. We'll see how it goes. The Super Eagles are threatening our Ghanaians already. Nigerians <laughs> are already <laughs> threatening to do all kinds of things if they win the AFCON. They, have, they won an AFCON in recent times, actually. So it's crazy that uh, Ghana can't seem to keep up with the level of the continent. But let's get to that game itself between Nigeria and Cameroon. Uh, I can, like I said before, this is an Afghan classic. They, they are neighbors. Uh, there are points where some parts of Cameroon were considered uh, to be Nigeria, actually, back in the day. So uh, you can imagine a lot of history uh, in the mix between the two teams. In the end, it was Nigeria who dominated this game from beginning to finish. They won by two goals to nil. Let's check out the highlights. So Rojamela looking on with an expressionless face there as Cameroon lose by two goals to nil to Nigeria. So Ademola Lukman getting both goals. Let's get to the analysis board and see uh, who was at fault. Let's see if Cameroon could have defended better. Coach, take us Okay, so before I looked at the two goals that Nigerians scored, mm -hmm. most people are asking, why was the goal 
disallowed. The first goal. So we need to explain that. You yeah. see, the rules of the game have actually changed. So once I roll this, I'll allow it to go. First punch by the goalkeeper. Yep. Then there, let it go. When it starts going through the replay, then I'll pause it mm -hmm. and explain why the goal was, mm. di was actually disallowed. Okay, just a second. Okay. Yeah, so we have the replay we have here. The replay here. First punch out. First punch out. He crosses he the ball back ball. in. If you look at here, mm -hmm. the goalkeeper is not the last man. Yeah. Actually, the goalkeeper is the last man. Yeah. Per the rules of but the he's game, supposed to be the last some people man. are yeah. asking that. But there's a player here in goal. Yeah. The, that player has swapped position with the goalkeeper. With the goalkeeper. So the player indirectly mm -hmm. has, has become been. the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper has become no. the last man. So if you look at per the strike here, mm -hmm. both Osime. The two Nigerian players here mm -hmm. were all in an offside position because they were behind the goalkeeper. If they had been in front of the goalkeeper, yeah, then goal they would stands. be played on. Then it means they were onside and their goal would have stand. But at the end of the day, once they were behind the goalkeeper, yeah. it put them in an offside position. Don't, don't pay any attention to the young man here. Mm. He's, he's not playing them on. He's actually not part of the equation, part of the equation there. Yeah. It is the goalkeeper that the rule says we should look at. Once you find yourself behind the goalkeeper of the opposing team, when he presents himself in a, in, in, to, to, to be part of the play and there's an outfit player behind him, mm -hmm. all of you are ruled offside. So that is why this goal here was disallowed. Nice now, one. let's go and talk about the first goal. I have never seen, <laughs> I have never seen at this level, if you are a defender, they are told to do the simple things. What is the simple things? Under pressure, you see the mistake ahead of you. Mm. As to why this Cameroonian defender decided to see the error going back to go, he's the only person who can explain. You could see the reaction of Rigobert Song. Yeah. That is Song's what, department. Mm -hmm. That was where he was so solid out. And Rigobert Song would have kicked that ball and virtually bounced into Osime. For yeah. Osime to know that, yes, I am Song, I am present, I don't entertain such pressure from you. Now, the first throw in mm -hmm. onto the defender was wrong. But the guy who threw the ball will argue that I got it wrong, but I got it to you. Yeah. And you saw Osime coming. Mm -hmm. So two things. You either technically pass the ball back directly to the goalkeeper mm -hmm. or you just value the ball. Yeah. Because it was obviously a 1v1 situation. If you've, and if you've known Osime, yeah. you don't want to be involved in any physical battle. Because you shake the guy off. So that is what the pass. he thrived on. Yeah. And credit must be given to him. I have seen several uh, tweets of people saying that a Jordan Ayo wouldn't have passed that ball to, to, to Inaki Williams. So if you put Jordan in the position oh. of Osime and mm -hmm. put Lukman... Mm -hmm. And put um, the, pass not, Williams, the pass is not going to come. The, he, will, he will try and score by himself. But hey, that is on the lighter side. The credit here <laughs> must be given to what? Victor Osima. He's showing so far. Yeah. In fact, he did show in that game that he indeed the best player on and the field. And I love, I love the fact that he didn't care about getting on the score no, scene. Not at all. Did all the dirty work, Where we've did got all the into, running. Where we've got into yeah. is about the team. Mm. You cannot be selfish. Because when you play selfish, and we lose, we get booted, and we all gone. Yeah. But because of the way he played yesterday, yeah. absolutely. But now this is the goal I believe was the best goal of the two. To be honest with you, the Nigerian build up to this goal was absolutely sweet. But the Cameroonians too were not okay. proactive. Hmm. Their defenders, instead of being proactive, decided to react. And in the game of football, if you tend to react all the time, yeah. your reaction may not match up to the intensity of the game and you'll be caught wanting. Now, look at that. Look at the build-up. Now, this is the pass. I love this pass by... It will be. It will be. It will be to the, Calvin Bassi. The three, Niger the three Cameroonian players thought that. They thought that. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. They thought the pass would have been given back to Lukman from Alexi Yeah. They yeah. Iwobi saw the left foot back to have overlapped. Now, watch. My main problem here mm -hmm. is this Cameroonian defender. I don't know why Makala is not allowing me to use it, but this Cameroonian defender here, this guy here, mm -hmm. when the ball went wide, this guy too 
Look at the gap between here and he made the attempt to go and block the cross. Yeah. How do you block this cross? Acres of space for So him. what I thought he should have done, mm -hmm. he should have rather waited for or stayed close to hold, hold your ground and then hold your ground and mm -hmm. let's see what he will do. Because already he was struggling now, to get now, to the Now path. let me even provide some context to why they were defending like that. That's now, right. If you watch this sequence, right? Now that's Calvin Bassi. Typically he's a center back. He's a center back. Zaidu Sanus is playing a left back. Now yeah. all game. Zaidu has not put in one, one decent cross, cross into the game. game. And I, he's the left back. So I'm sure right. the Cameroonians are thinking, you know what? Let's give him space. He will cross the ball in. We can probably deal with it first time. But in dealing with it first time, you needed to be proactive. Look mm. at it. It is a 3v2 here. Yeah. So what is this Cameroonian defender doing mm. here? Yeah. This is a smacker. Just get closer a bit. That is the proactivity I'm talking mm. about. You need to react. And for this defender trying, if, if I move it along, you yeah. see that, look at him, he's moving. Where yeah. are you going? Where exactly are you going? Yeah. Where to? You now don't he, need to Now he's there. left an island with somebody. With a huge gap. A yeah. huge gap. Uncalled for. Look at Rigo Besson's reaction. It's clearly basic. Yeah. And at this level, for me, I've always said that I'm so happy because this is the pinnacle of the African game. If you are committing such errors at this you deserve level, to be punished. you deserve to be punished. And for the Super Eagles, yeah. look, I can't wait to watch them play against Angola. Mm. Just a quick point on that. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very difficult game for the two sides. Mm. But if Angola can stay focused and they get their game going, yep. they are very capable of frustrating Nigeria and making this a long, long day for the Super mm. What they need to do, don't isolate Osimen with any of your fullbacks. Yeah. When there's somebody with him, there should be a sweeper. Because he's, he will win every area, area duel, yeah. and he's just not winning them. Yeah. He's passing them with his head and involving the likes of Lukman. Look at Lukman and Co. When the ball goes to him, they tend to draw closer to him. They don't move yeah. away from him. Yeah. You know that yeah. He'll win the ball in their direction. Mm. And that is the most important ball. Who wins the second ball yeah. when Osimen goes up to win those balls at the very first time of accident? And once Angola mm. can play, we are going to see a very beautiful I'll, game. I'll just touch on Nigeria again when we come back from the break. You can take your seat now. Uh, brilliant analysis there from uh, Coach Nimli, giving us some context to the goals that were scored. When we come back, we'll touch briefly on the Super Eagles and the style of play they've adopted this tournament. Is it sustainable? Will it go all the way to help them win uh, in the competition? Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll get into more AFCON highlights. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Do send us your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you've made of the AFCON so far. Which team has caught your eye? Who have been your favorite players? Dennis Nyako, coach Nimli, still in here. Let me just take Dennis's thoughts quickly yeah. on Cameroon. What did they do with Song? What's the way forward for them? To be honest, been, I've been very disappointed with them. They've been very shambolic. Um, I've watched the games they've played. You know, despite their late rally against Gambia, they've been a very poor side. Um, I think their problems started even before the, the, the tournament started. Basically, with the issues with Unana, yeah. and then uh, because we've had issues about uh, the, the government being an issue, having a, a problem with the fact that I mean, Eto himself didn't have has a problem with Unana. They have, he, they have. So there's been they, so they, much politics even yeah. behind the team, and these are things that Cameroon you know, come to an Afcon. Exactly. At least the last three editions, always with some political so, mix exactly. or some. Controversy. And you see, I mean, for me, I, I wonder because sometimes the fuss about Onana sometimes amazes me. You know, Onana is a, is a good goalkeeper, but is it worth all this fuss sometimes? If, like, initially, the fact yeah. that he wasn't going to come, I thought he should have, if he wasn't going to come before the, the, the training camp, he should have moved on from him. He should have moved on. He's, he's, Onana is not, he's, he's not. And, and the, he's coming and he's actually been in post just so once. I, so why do you create artificial issues for I, I think they've managed to create artificial problems for, for themselves because. The team that itself has had its own issues. They've been practically blunt up front ever yeah. since Abubakar got injured. You could see that in the games yeah. they played, yeah. they've offered nothing in attack. And and trust me, I've, I've I, I know the Blasters have been the, like the clowns of the tournament, but Cameroon themselves have not, have not done it. They, yesterday, game. yesterday they looked every bit a team that stumbled into the round of yeah, 16 stage. I think their biggest problem was the lack of creativity. They didn't create yeah. a single chance they, in they, that game against Nigeria. And I'm sure for for a team like Cameroon that had the likes of Mboma. They had like they, the, uh, there was the, the, the Basso, yeah. Basso, 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 yeah, Basso, yeah. In, the, in the year when they won the recent. Exactly. But even got, there was nobody who could pick on the ball and no. go past two or three players, no. or even a player. It was Iguisa, they were hoping could drop, but he's not that type yeah. of player. He yeah. can only receive and get Pass, a yeah. tempo going. But to go past the opponent, he will never do that. But on the point of whether they should keep or not to keep Rigobertson, I will keep him. Mm. Because they themselves are undergoing some transitions. 
the Cameroonian team... Cameroonians don't seem to believe in him at all. No, <laughs> they, I will keep it. They say that because, he's in the job because his good friend is FA president. No, I don't think so. Look, he, he qualified them to the World Cup out of nothing. Yeah. The, the team is, being, it is undergoing transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's gotten them... They have a lot of new round. players in there. there. Lots of new players in there. And it would be very, very unfair to bring another person, yeah. a, yeah. a new man. Allow him to work. I think it is looking like the Senegal situation. Mm. With Ali Sisi. Okay. He, I mean, there, was a, there were moments or there were times where they got booted out in yep. the second round, in the quarterfinal. They, 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 they didn't stuck play. with him, rebuilt, came back. You see, if you've got a plan, I think you need to stick with him. I don't fancy the situation where uh, the FA themselves are having acknowledged yeah. that they are undergoing transition. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out, you sack a coach who is trying to rebuild a team. Allow him to do the job. And I think it will pay off. Maybe something will happen for them yeah. in Morocco next year. But not to catch you, but I also think that they need to. I think this Eto Nana situation, I think it has to be mended. Because if they don't mend that even issue. Even Rigobert Song. Who has the issue? Because, because, is it even Rigo, so Eto Rigobert Song, <laughs> exactly. Onana, they've all had issues. They, they and it's funny resolve. because Eto actually groomed Onana. Yes. Exactly. In fact, both Cameroonian goalkeepers are cousins. Onana and Ondoa are cousins. They yeah. came from the Eto Academy. That's right. And then Eto so, took them to Barcelona. So, so, so there shouldn't be any problem. Song doesn't that. like an Onana type of goalkeeper. And that's why he was sent home in the last half. Because he, he, he said he, he was takes, too adventurous. No, but I, that is where the, where the game has got into. And mm. I think the earlier Song admits. I think Song is accommodating Onana because of Samuel Eto. That's only because he, he wants him as a goalkeeper. No, that's but, the problem. But, but I think that. If they can, if they can settle that issue, yeah, Onana should be the number one goalkeeper for Cameroon. Hmm. As, as yet, the young man, Ondo, he won, Ondo, Ondo won the cup for them. As, exactly, as about but to say that. Where is he now? He's not progressed the way. Yeah, we he all plays for Rem now. Um, he's not progressed the way we all thought. Onana has gone through Inter Milan, Ajax, yeah. Inter Milan, Manchester, Manchester United. United. So that's what it says. Let's get to some other highlights. Let's get to that game um, involving Equatorial Guinea and Guinea. Very um, highly competitive. Encounter in the end, Guinea, some way, somehow, fortune smiled on them. Their own hard work managed to pull them to 1 0, is how it ended. A glancing header to the near post. I mean, how do you even save that? A DJ Drogba like header. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the type of header. Olivier Giroud is notorious for. for such, he's made a career of these type of headers. headers. Glancing header at the near post, like you can't do anything about it. There's no boring <laughs> game in the tournament, isn't it? This was no boring at all. Yeah. And this was an upset. It was an upset. Yeah. That is how far Guitura Guinea yep. has come. Yep. Because they have shown that they could rock shoulders yep. with the big boys. Before this tournament, the Guinea were, were I mean, considered a bigger footballing nation than, than Guitura Guinea. Guinea. Yep. And, and for Guitura Guinea, having topped the group of the elephant and the super eagles, you have mm -hmm. to look at them and say, look, they've done so well. I think what they should be looking at going forward is to be getting a replacement for their main man. Mm. He's so, 34 years. Yeah. Maybe he'll come back again in Morocco. Because Morocco is just next a year That's and a half from here. Yep. He can he if 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 he can take good care of himself and then work hard, yep. he should be in Morocco. But after Morocco, what happens? I mm. don't think he's somebody for the future. But having said that, look, I I love the way they play their football. When you see a team playing to their strength, yeah, then it tells you all the coach have done is just to get the players to play to their strength yeah. whilst he coaches them in between their moments. Mm. And for them, well rehearsed. Even at so a man cool down, on the ball. Look, when they were a man down, look at how composed. Yeah. So even when they went the man down, yeah. they were the best team. But just that, it became so tight. At that moment, mm -hmm. there isn't a second opportunity. Everything needed to be settled yeah. today and today. I think that was what got to them. I think in the last minute, what they should have done was to acknowledge the fact that they were a man down. Mm -hmm. Because if you look keep at the it coach, tight, probably keep it, drag the, it to extra the time. The coach should have reminded everybody, look, let's sit back and let's limit the spaces. Already, mm. Guinea started coming at them. So they should have held their line, yeah. provided themselves with proper defensive line cover and make sure they repel. But credit must be given. The delivery and the header, like I said, a DJ Drogba. I mean, that goal reminded me of the Drogba Chelsea Bam 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 the one that he used <laughs> to, uh, to uh, yeah. restore parity in the Champions League that, that Chelsea that one had more eventually power. won. Yeah, that one had more power yeah. because yeah. one matter no, I, I love these type of goals. Yes, yeah. yes. They're brilliant. Cross goals. brought in, glancing. You don't even see it coming as a goalkeeper. Normally, yeah. the goalkeepers are caught on away. No, you can't do anything about the back it. Of the net. You can't do it. Let's get to some foreign stuff now. Uh, the FA Cup uh, is happening. Chelsea Football Club have been in action. They've been in pretty 
decent form in recent time. We'll do back-to-back -back highlights. So Chelsea up against Aston Villa. We'll do Tottenham, Manchester City back-to-back. -back, and then we'll come back in studio and discuss. So two very interesting FA Cup games there. Chelsea drawing goalless. Man City winning by a scrappy Nathan Akego. Then his quick thoughts on those games. Yeah, so I'll start with the Chelsea game. Uh, the same old chronic disease. Uh, they can't score goals. That, that's the problem. Because, it, and for me, it's, 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 it's crazy because for the amount, the amount of money Chelsea has spent mm -hmm. and, and did not cure that, part, that department of their team is something that actually worries me. Because they play all the football they have. Yep. Because if you watch them in recent times, realize that they've improved in terms of how they've been able to handle the games and because they've got some very good points in recent matches. Yeah. But it's the same old thing. They, they don't take their chances. And what's some of the, you should have watched this game by three goals to nil. And the fact that they couldn't even score a single goal mm -hmm. even, is beyond imagination. Because there were times that you see Noni Mandreke, you know. One on one. Know, one on one. Multiple one on one if, opportunities. If you're, if, you're, if you're a player with your sort and you're playing for Chelsea, you should be able to curl that into the angle, into the top corner. And, and it's something they couldn't do. And it's, 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 for me, it's worrying because they have to mm. kill that by buying a striker and I, I keep on saying this that for, for all the money Chelsea has spent you can't say that they are moving this team on and saying that the team team will improve next season if you send this same team to this to, to the next season yeah. saying that you are, you are going a project and the fact that you expect them to improve the subsequent season trust me they'll go nowhere hmm. so it's just sad but they would have to spend more money to address that goal scoring issue because it's become a chronic disease it's, it's, it's always evident in games that they played and sometimes I ask myself well, they couldn't see that even in this transfer we do, and they instead bought a lot of players that are alike in sending the patterns. Yeah. Because you see a lot of the Chelsea players, they are all similar. And, oh. and, and it's something that actually is going to hamper this team. And until so that is addressed, mm -hmm. they're going to keep on having these issues. Because if they were, you're going they were to hoping to buy Ivan Tony, he swept both <laughs> Chelsea and Arsenal. <laughs> no, but, uh, but they, they should have known that he wouldn't leave. But we are hearing about Karim Benzema trying to leave Saudi Arabia for a loan spell in the Premier League, possibly. So you should, you should keep your fingers crossed. There, might, there, there just see, might be a, a forward coming in before the, the window closes. For Karim, for how Karim is. For, trust me. Karim stop is stop gap measure until they can buy a proper striker but can, can in the Karim, can, can Karim stay fit throughout the rest of it? Because he's having injury issues at this. And, yeah. he, and he's old now. And, hmm. for, and so like for this game, I feel for them because going to the Villa Park to... to be, to, to they should have won Villa. this game at they the should have won this point. And, and trust me, as Villa at, at that home ground is like a locomotive machine. And it's a cup game too exactly. for Una Emery. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> it's not and, looking and, good. And he hardly tend to lose that. I, I agree with everything that... The, the, let's touch yeah, on the other said, game for yeah. me and then we'll talk about Liverpool and Jürgen That was Klopp. a classic. Tottenham that Man City. That's Man City game. Yeah. But Sokoglu, I don't know, but it is like he's a very stubborn manager. <laughs> yeah, I say so because... Yeah. It is good to have an identity, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's also equally very bad when you don't acknowledge the quality of your opponent mm. and you tend to stick to what you believe in. And knowing very well that per the quality of your opponent, when you stick to what you believe in, yeah. you are likely to be punished. We watched the highlight. We didn't see Spurs get any decent uh -huh. chance. Every decent chance fell to, Man City. fell to Man City. And I was asking myself when I was watching it, could he have done something different? Let me ask you something. If you're a manager who has a hardcore philosophy, you spend preseason coaching your team through your philosophy, and that is what your team has come to live and die by, how easy is it to switch on to something else when, let's say, you come up against an opponent like this where you know that they are superior to you, but, hey, is it that I go with my philosophy and probably die doing it, or I switch to an unfamiliar uh, style of play and probably go out there and get killed anyway? You see, the best managers have always been the pragmatic ones. Pep Guardiola is indeed had shown that mm. he's very pragmatic. Mm. He's learned that you cannot always go out there yeah. and be very expansive. That's true. So it would be very naive on the part of whoever it is as a coach, yeah. thinking that your philosophy is what you should live and die. What you should live and die by. No, there are times that you go into a cup game. That is what we are all playing for, isn't it? They've gotten booted out of those. Yeah. Imagine if that was a, a Champions League final. Yeah. It would be very naive on your part not to acknowledge the threats of your opponent. You acknowledging doesn't mean you are overly respecting them. But mm. it's just an indication that, look, you respect the quality you are going to face. And therefore, what can you do? The, at times, when you do the things that your opponent don't expect from you, mm -hmm. you rather end up what catching them unaware yeah. and you tend to go and punish. So, like, look... The best managers are the pragmatic ones. 
you being pragmatic is doesn't mean you are moving away for your from what you believe mm -hmm. in forever. If you need to do that for that game yeah. to get a result, why not do it and move on? Hmm. Well, coach says that sometimes you need to do what you need to do uh, to win games. Poster Koglu says that he uh, lost the high line. And it is what you remember, uh, even he, against he Chelsea, when they were yep. two, two yep. men down. Yep, he, he still did what he had. No, come on, man. didn't you want know. to change his style even in that game. Let's get to more FA Cup action. Let's get to that Liverpool game, uh, against uh, Norwich, and then we'll also get to Newport versus Manchester United back to back highlights. We'll come back in studio and discuss. So, goals galore for both Liverpool and Manchester United. The big news from the Liverpool uh, episode, of course, is that Jurgen Klopp says that he's stepping down at the end of the season almost a decade in charge of liverpool football club he says that uh, he feels like the time is right i'm not sure how everybody's taking that but that's big news yeah of course nobody saw it coming because i i thought he would give it at least to another, his contract expires yeah so. another three more seasons because um if he was going to leave he wouldn't have supervised the transition yeah that midfield had to be rebuilt Mm. But for every good manager, it tells me he's indeed a Liverpool true and true. Because he wouldn't want to leave this team, go sit back mm -hmm. and watch it from afar and see the team struggle. So he's given who the next manager will be a proper foundation that he walk into and build. Because if the foundation is weak, yeah. what can the righteous do? Yeah. So he's giving you a, pro a proper foundation mm -hmm. and come and build on that. So what you don't want to do now... I, I, I don't think at this current moment anybody will want to play Liverpool, especially not at Anfield. Yeah. Because this man is going to look, pump these guys up to the yeah. extent that the, whoever comes there, mm -hmm. they will see it as another way of saying goodbye mm -hmm. to a true servant. Mm -hmm. That's what the quality of the football, absolutely brilliant. Look at yeah. the quality of the goals. Yeah. Look at, and today I saw. Some youthful players, young, 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 yeah, young. He's young, been talent. given a lot of them opportunities exactly. to come in. And they all had a perfect contribution to yeah. the day. Whatever Liverpool did, they all had a perfect contribution. It is beautiful to see uh, Jota on the score sheet. I yeah. think in the absence of Mohamed Salah, if he can still fit, and Darwin Nunez also con contribute his fair share of the goals, mm -hmm. I think they'll be able to hold the fourth until Salah eventually yeah. returns from injury and then con continue with the work. I am, I, it is like, I'm so much in love with Jorgen Klopp to the extent that I really do want Liverpool to win the league this season <laughs> and say him a, a perfect goodbye to a true seven. So mm. for my United, again, they nearly, they <laughs> nearly, I mean, if you are leading against Newport, a, Newport, 2-0 comfortable yep. lead. Yeah. You allow them to redeem all the two goals before you go on and win it? No, come on. A Man City will not do that. A Liverpool will not do that. That again tells you where United find themselves at the moment. Mm. Because if you compare what they are doing to Man City, yeah. to Liverpool, these are the pace setters. And at the end of the day, yep. you need to start dominating such teams without giving them any opportunity to recover from an onslaught. But if you can allow them to believe, mm. having taken an early 2-0 lead, and you've got probably got against the quality opposition. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't have you've been able to recover to go and win that. So, but that is typical FA Cup football too. That is what the competition is all about. Then I just snap thoughts on yeah. the Jurgen Klopp thing before we go on our next break. Quick thoughts on that. How did you feel about it? Possible successes? I was shocked though when I heard it. I was. I, it's the last story I actually expected uh, because his, his marriage in Liverpool has been successful. You, you watch how the state Liverpool was in before he came in yeah. and how he managed to transform this Liverpool team, how it was and mm -hmm. kind of energy pumped into that team and it was, it was great. So uh, they're going to be losing somebody who is very special. But as you said, it's going to really stimulate them for the season. Um, I think these, these players would like, you know, for, for Georgian to live on a high, meaning that they're going to, every single game they're going to play in, hmm. uh, and the upcoming games are going to be very hot because they want to put in every effort, everything possible yeah. to, to, to you know, win something. For me, I think that for if, if there's any team that can actually give them, give Man City a, a run for, for, for this season, I think I'll, I'll pick Liverpool rather than the, 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 the comic Arsenal team. So, um, yes. Arsenal will not be happy <laughs> with you. <laughs> so, yeah. so, basically, yes. I, I, I think that uh, he's, he's done. But I think Coach mentioned something. Uh, uh, he's, he, what he's done right now is managed, uh, he has managed to put this team in a, in a situation where 
they are better than they were some time ago. Because yeah. anybody who picks this team now yeah. is picking a better Liverpool team. Just but a few touches and, and, and a few exactly positions and they are good to go. The team he inherited was very poor. Yeah. And, and for him to leave the, the team like this is actually poor. Because he could have actually decided to leave, could have left last season when things were going horribly sure. wrong and all of that. So it's good. Um, but for United, uh, you mentioned the successes for, for Liverpool. I, I, I think that for now, the names that I hear right Thomas now... Frank, Thomas Frank, Xavi Alonso. Xavi Alonso. But if you ask Thomas me... Thomas Frank, the Brentford? Brentford, yeah. yeah but, no, no, no. <laughs> Liverpool shouldn't go to <laughs> I so, think I mean, he's an old-fashioned... I was thinking old the same coach. thing. But I think for a modern manager, I think yeah. Alonso, Alonso could be an example. But you see... Uh, somebody could say it's too early, uh, but I think that the, the Leverkusen test hmm. is one he's passing, and I don't think the Leverkusen test is is, is that of a small test. I think he's he's been he's shown some. Uh, if he's able to beat Bayern Munich to the title, ex exactly. You bring him to that, Anfield, yeah. Hmm. So that that so it's a test that he's passing. It's a huge test he's passing. That's so a I ten think, year ten year test <laughs> to pass. Exactly. So so I feel like yeah, he for me. Uh, if you're looking at a success, he could be uh, one of the favorites for the job. Hmm. Xavi Alonso, young up-and-coming manager. Uh, for all they've done this season, they are still unbeaten, but they still haven't. Be they didn't beat Borussia Dortmund in the first round. They didn't beat Bayern in the first round. They played Borussia Dortmund this weekend again, or they played Munchen Gladbach. Uh, failed to beat Gladbach as well. So they still need to beat Dortmund and Bayern uh, this season just to cement their credentials. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get into a lot more of that stuff. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Do keep your messages coming. Let me read a few of them before we get into more highlights. So this one here says, um, Kwesi from a showman. Please, I want to see what Coach thinks about Antoine Semenyo's performance for Ghana at the AFCON. We want to hear what he thinks. I'm sure he can uh, touch on that briefly. Amani Mutala Tanko says, good to see you in Keter and Coach. It's been a long time. That Equatorial last minute goal was a really good one. Uh, this one here is a really, really long one. I'll try and see if I can find time uh, to read it before the show ends. But uh, let's get into more uh, highlights uh, here. And let's get to the Italian Serie A. Some really good games happening in the Serie A. AC Milan were up against Bologna. Bologna is one of those teams that have been really coached well uh, this season. Thiago uh, Mota out there doing uh, his thing. Juventus were up against Empoli. So let's get back-to-back -back highlights of those two games. So Tommaso Baldanzi denying uh, Juventus all three points there. That AC Milan game just left me shaking my head because Ruby lost his cheek scoring twice. Maybe they needed him. Looks because like he's missed, his, the they missed two penalties on the day. In fact, both lost his cheek and Pulisic look like they've turned their club career around since they yeah. went to AC Milan. You see, um, <laughs> these were two players who could not just still fit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been telling people that I think when it comes to Proper medics yeah. in it, football. Italy is where you need, Italy to, be. Is where you need yeah. to be. They are True. the best. True. If if a player they know struggles, how to prolong the career of prolong the career of players. Yeah. If a player struggles for fitness, just get him to go to Italy, <laughs> and they have the proper way of doing it. As to how they go about doing it, I remember there was a spell when they had Ambrosini, they had Sadov, they had Gattuso, yes, they had Maldini, they had guys who were like. 30, 35, 36, 38. Costa, Costa but they were all very, they yep. were all playing yep. and they could match up to the young boys at yeah. the time. But back to the game again. I think, look, Milan will look at this and they, will, they should be hugely disappointed. What was that? They, they missed two penalties on yeah. the day. Yeah. They took the lead and they eventually surrounded the lead. Inter Milan has been presented the title yeah. without any difficulty. We all thought Napoli. 54 we'll 53, actually. So Inter are on 54, mm -hmm. Juventus are on 53. Juventus yeah. drew today, so if they had won, they would have gone top of the table. Exactly. And Juve, to, you can pardon them because they play a chunk of that game with 10 men. Yeah. But hey, if you are playing at home and you are leading at the last minute, mm -hmm. a typical Max Allegri team yeah. should be able to see that through or see that beyond the finish line. But the Italian season is looking to be very interesting. But I still yeah. believe that. Um, 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 Inter Milan will have just what it takes to win it. I've been very, very disappointed with the defense put up by Napoli. They've not shown to anybody at all mm -hmm. that they, they are indeed Too many a, 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 a team who won the league. Maybe yeah. the exit of the coach when Spalletti, yeah. Spalletti left, yeah. the players just couldn't. And the appointment of that was it Rui Garcia. Rui Garcia. I don't Rui Garcia. know who recommended him for now, because the brand of football that Spalletti yeah. had handed over, clearly he was going to re re require that they change everything completely. Yeah. And these players had gotten used to Spalletti's mm -hmm. method, so mm -hmm. the owners of the club should have looked out for somebody who was a bit closer to Spalletti and could add something a bit more different to 
modify and give them a solid way to defend the title. But they didn't do that. And after the sacking of Garcia, they went for who? Watamazari. Uh, what Watamazari? Again, <laughs> poor decision making. I couldn't believe that. What were they thinking about? Yeah. And as it stands, it's Old affiliation with the club. They may even not qualify for Champions League. They're looking really bad. They have 32 they points very, so far. They are bad. languishing in mid-table yeah. as things okay. stand now. Um, let me take your thoughts quickly on those two games and then we'll get to more uh, action. I, 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 would, I would like to give credit to Bologna. I think I've, I've liked what they've done this season. They've been, yeah. they've been playing so well under Thiago Mota. And Zeski has been a, their arrowhead. And they've been... Do you know, of course, they, they play with so much intensity that when, when they start games and, and in the first 30 minutes, you're not really ready for them. They blow you apart. Mm -hmm. and that's what they did mm -hmm. to Roma and these mm -hmm. few teams at home. So I've been impressed with because watching him take over Bologna, I know I, 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 realized, I saw where they were and what he has managed to do to this team yeah. to transform them. You know, we're relegation threats. Exactly. And for them to be able to win games and, and be where they are this season is, is remarkable. For the Milan game, for the Milan, I think I, I, I just believe that they. They just, they just blew away because I thought they had so many chances to win this game. Um, two they missed penalties. Um, Giroud had a few chances he couldn't take it. So, li like you said, I think it's looking like Inter for me. Um, mm -hmm. um, Juve seem not to be able to kill games sometimes. And they're not, they're not scoring enough goals because yeah. it's, it's the, they are very much dependent on Vlahovic or, or Kiesa. And those guys can't stay fit. And that's the problem with Juve because they have just a small pool of players mm -hmm. who scores a lot of goals for them. And the moment they're injured, that they struggle to get a goal. So what Allegri has been doing this season is trying to yeah. maximize them as much as he can and try to conserve the game. That's why I was really surprised about how this Empoli game went because most of the games he's played, mm -hmm. he has managed to, if, if they manage to take the lead in the first half and he realizes that there's so much pressure, he just tries to you know, have the low block and try to conserve the lead. But actually, they couldn't do that in this game. And that's what sometimes that surprised me. For, for me, for how Inter is playing, I think that they are favorites for the, the, rest of the, title. For the, for the title. Yeah. Well, Inter Milan getting all the props here. Bologna are seventh on the Serie A table. They are just knocking on the doors of the European places. They don't score a lot of goals, but they don't concede a lot of goals either for a team of their stature. Doing really good work uh, out there. Let's get to more uh, highlights. This time, let's go to Germany. Let's get to Bayern Munich versus Augsburg. That was a game where Bayern had to dig deep to win. Harry Kane on the score sheet once again. And then we'll get to Bayern, uh, Bayer Leverkusen versus Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah. You barely ever see an exciting game like that that ends goalless. goalless. Goal. Look, look at that game. I just hope that the pressure that comes with beating Bayern Munich to the tie yeah, won't get to them. It's not what is getting to them. Because clearly this game should have been wrapped up. They had all the chances in the world ah, to at least score one goal. Score one goal to win it. Yeah. But hey, if Bayern is chasing you. This is what you tend to experience. <laughs> but look, I think they are a very good footballing yeah. team. Yeah. You yeah. enjoy them all day. And look, look at Jeremy, Jeremy Frimpong. He's a right wing back. He's a right wing back. And from the way Javi Alonso is using the young man, you can only envy him. He's almost at 10 goals this season. Yes. Yeah. I doubt whether they can keep him. I doubt No, him. he's gone after he's this gone. season. Yeah, yeah. I think he's gone. gone. When yeah. the manager leaves, clearly. A I lot of them the will be gone. To leave, I yeah. expect him to. Because, yes, the German league is a good league, but... The cash there is not what it should be. Yeah. So when those with the cash comes calling, of, of course, Eric Ten Hag has always looked at Jeremy Frimpong as a director. I'm surprised why the Premier League teams have not bought him yet. Yes. Yeah. I, I think Manchester United in particular undecided on what to do with Wan-Bissaka. Mm -hmm. But from what we are hearing, yeah. it's likely that Wan-Bissaka will leave and Jeremy Frimpong looks the likely hmm. candidate to replace him. That would be a nice catch. Uh, Liverpool, if you, are, if you are getting Zabi Alonso, you should bring Jeremy Frimpong yeah, simple with him. along with him so that you can permanently move Trent up the field. Into because, midfield. Look, that youngster is amazing. Crazy, amazing, amazing footballer. Let's finish off with some action from the Spanish La Liga. Let's get to Bayern. Uh, Barca versus Villarreal and Real Madrid versus Las Palmas. Good games, good highlights. And it was after that game against Villarreal that Zavi decided that, you know what, the Barca job maybe is a little too much. I'll be stepping aside at the end of the season. We'll talk about that, but first enjoy the highlights. So Barcelona capitulating in very major fashion there. <sighs> Crazy how their season has gone. A lot of their games have gone this way, where they are losing. They seem to claw their way back in. They get a late winner. It's been like that all season for them. Xavi says that at the end of this campaign, he's stepping aside. I, 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 I don't think that is the best thing. You don't agree with him? You don't I think that's what he should be doing? I think the, 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 the problem with Barcelona goes beyond Xavi Hernandez. Hmm. This is a team that cannot 
buy the sort of players the man would like to buy. So he's working under some very difficult situations. But he's still managing to get Ezreal Felix yeah. and, no, a, no. and a no. Cancelo see, to play for You them. see, a, a, a Javi team will not be using the one they brought to come and replace Sergio Busquets. Romeo? Romero. Come on, shut up. Yeah, that is the key. Oreo, is Oreo that Romero. Is. Yeah. And, yeah. They will not be using him. They should have gone in there and brought somebody younger, good money, put it in there and let him take. Because we all knew the importance of Busquets to this team. Mm -hmm. And again, the fact that they don't have a proper number nine. Lewandowski is finished. Yeah, he's also sharply declined since he came. No, but he's, he's past 36 years. Yeah. Would they, if the Barcelona of old was, in, was old, they wouldn't have gone for Lewandowski in the first place. Yeah. So he's given them only one decent season, and that is it. So as to who would walk in there and do hmm. better, hmm. don't forget, Xavi in his first season, Won, won the, the league, league with that. Yep. So as to that's who I'm, come surpri in, I'm surprised he's deciding to step aside. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's been a rough best. season, but... Hey. Or they should, have, they should have more or less hoped that this team will make the Champions League. Yeah. They're not, they not better They're than fourth Real on the table. So they're they're currently 10 points behind Real Madrid. So it's about making it's the good. Champions League mm. and see whether they can bring in some money to change the face of the team and allow him to do his job. I think if he leaves, they will struggle. More problems. More problems, I Dennis, you get the last word yeah. before we go. Listen, I, I just think that this Barca team is in shambles, okay? I, <laughs> and I compare it to Real Madrid some time ago. Yeah. The identity has been lost. I feel like they're doing what Madrid used to do some years ago when they were interested in top top chain chain. and bringing in names instead of bringing in very young players. And interestingly, Real yeah. has resorted to getting the young players in yeah. and, and trying to give them time. And then they are actually now doing what Madrid used to do some time ago. And I hmm. ask myself, you mentioned Romeo, just as Romeo, some, a lot of players they brought in they brought in so many numbers. And I'm like, you, you see Some of them the play a season, a season and a half, and you don't and, see and, them and, again. And you know what I mean? They're all lone players. And, and they're all yeah. coming in. Joao Felix comes in, has a few good games, one, two, and, he, and it diminishes. So yeah. I think the whole structure around there is wrong. I think they have to go back to what they used to do, you know, bringing in more of the Pedri and Gavi in. Yeah. Some people may say because Gavi's injury has come in, but you can't just blame that just on one young player. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot more to... What is going on? I I I I I think that Xavi has got some few that games I've seen that tactically he's, he's managed to lose those games. But I, like he said, I feel he's he's. I don't think he's a bad coach. I just feel like the structure in Barcelona is not working now to support him. Hmm. And what Real Madrid is doing now is also creating that kind of variance where they're not able to catch up because. It's, and that, it's and that will always bother Barcelona. Uh, exactly. The moment yeah. they see that Real Madrid is doing great, yeah. and we are not doing great, then it's a, it's, it's, it's it's a, a problem for us. We need to tear down exactly. our structure. That's, that's so a lot, a lot going on with FC Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, let me just give you an update before we go. So that Egypt uh, DRC game is still in extra time. There's a red card uh, for Mohamed Hamdi of Egypt. Um, second yellow card, so um, in the 97th minute. So uh, that's how uh, that game is breaking up uh, as we speak. Let me just give you an update. It's 108 minutes played wow. uh, in that particular game. So uh, hopefully we'll get you updates of that one um, in our subsequent bulletins uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Coach Christopher Nimli. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis Nyako. Thank you for um, making time to watch the show. We do have a big fan base in Nigeria. I found out to so, our big Niger brothers there. Hopefully you guys do well in the AFCON, but don't win it. Just stop short of winning it. We know what you will do when you win the AFCON. But hey, same time next week, we'll be back here on your screen to scorecard. My name is Benjamin Nketiah. It's been great hanging out with you.